my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today. We're gonna talk about asexuality and polyamory and my experience with that and I'm making that face because I am really nervous about this for a couple reasons. So one, as far as I can tell, no one on YouTube has ever talked about being asexual and being polyamorous at the same time. So I feel a lot of pressure to do this correctly for some reason. And also because I'm a little worried about opening Pandora's box on the subject in terms of polyamory because I am primarily a kink and BDSM educator. That is what people know me as. And so I'm worried if I talk about polyamory, people will take that as gospel and will also treat me as a polyamory educator. And I'm not entirely opposed to that. I just, I worry because I feel like I shouldn't be an educator about polyamory. I feel like that's not my area and I want to be able to talk about being poly without it being necessarily super, super educational. And if you do want some educational resources, I will put some names of authors and books to check out down below. I can't put links down there because YouTube is just flagging all of my links as being pornography and I really don't want to have to deal with that. So we're just going to do names and books down below for you guys to check out. But uh, yeah, being asexual and being polyamorous. I think the place to start is with my journey being asexual because that actually came first. Also, quick note, it is rapidly changing from a sunny day into a stormy dark night. So if the lighting is weird, I can't control the weather and I apologize, but my journey as an asexual. I was introduced to asexuality actually by a partner I had when I was in high school and they were Aero Ace. And because they were Aero Ace, I didn't really think I could be asexual because they were like this one very far end point of the spectrum. And so looking at them, I kind of went like, okay, well, like I'm not that, so I can't be this thing. And at the time, like demisexual, gray A, like those terms were around, but unless you were on the AVEN forums, you wouldn't really know about them. Cause at this point, this would have been like 20, I don't know, 2010, maybe somewhere around there. So a while ago. And I didn't really figure out the term asexual for myself until I was in college. I had never really been drawn to sex. I had never really been drawn to sexual focused relationships, but it was college and everyone else was doing it. And I sort of felt like, okay, well, maybe even though I'm not really feeling drawn to it, maybe I just need to try it first. Maybe I just need to give it a go. And so I kind of experimented a little. I learned about sexuality more. I learned about masturbation. I learned about all that stuff and tried some of it and didn't like most of it and kind of went, okay, well, like this isn't my thing and this actually feels really alienating and bad. So I don't want to do this anymore. And I eventually decided through reading more and I don't even remember how I originally found what being gray ace was. Maybe it was an Ash Hardell video. Maybe it was something like that. I think it was a YouTuber. Actually, now that I think about it, I think it was actually Ash Hardell, which another great educator, highly recommend their videos on the whole alphabet of being asexual, very good stuff. But I eventually sort of realized that that was closer to my own experience. But even knowing that I was asexual, it didn't 
necessarily change things for me because being ace, I was typically put in a position where, again, before not knowing I was asexual and that was a label that worked for me, I didn't have language to describe what I was comfortable with and I also didn't really have a lot of good language about consent and boundaries or anything either. So I felt like I had to acquiesce to certain things I wasn't comfortable with in order to get the romantic relationship that I wanted. After I figured out the term and I started using it and I could say, hey, you know, sex or these specific types of sex aren't necessarily going to be in our relationship and I hope that you're going to be okay with that. I had a lot of scenarios where people kind of said, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. And then later on, like three months, six months later, it suddenly really wasn't okay. And people felt like I should have changed if I loved them or that I had taken so long and that I was blue balling them and all this other stuff that just was really kind of nasty, honestly. And it was overall not a great experience because I could have these relationships that I thought were really close and fulfilling and made both of us happy. And then I found out that wasn't necessarily the case and that was really upsetting. And interspersed with this is my discovery of the kink community. Oh, that was thunder. We don't have thunderstorms here. Listen, y'all, I lived in the South. I lived in the Southeast. I'm used to thunderstorms but not here. Okay, so that will have an interesting ambiance <laughs> for the rest of the story, but on a dark and stormy night, I discovered the BTSM community, and I had broken up with a vanilla partner, and at that time, around the end of our relationship, I had discovered kink and knew that I wanted it, but felt restricted and that I couldn't pursue those things with them, necessarily. And so after we broke up, I was like, fuck it, we're gonna go do it, we're gonna go try XYZ thing, make a FetLife account, do this, do that, and I dove right in, which is not me at all, usually, and I was so thankful for that experience. It totally changed my life. It is the reason why I do what I'm doing today. So I had sort of two parts of the equation figured out because I think kink and asexuality do interface with my polyamory in an important way. Now, throughout my life, starting with when I was a teenager, I sort of knew what kink was, right? There was Fifty Shades, there was fan fiction, like he kind of knew about it. And I did have that first partner that was asexual that introduced me to the topic. So those ideas were in the back of my head even before I knew they were things that worked for me. When it came to polyamory, I had no idea. I was one of those people that just thought the only way that people had multiple person relationships was polygamy and like those hardcore Mormons and maybe certain tribal groups in remote parts of the world. Like I just had no concept that that was even an option. And it was through kink that I was exposed to polyamory. And I remember being at a play party and there was a group of people that were having a conversation about it. And they were like, oh my gosh, like, I'm so thankful I have polyamory. Like it's completely changed my life. Like I can't believe I have these multiple relationships. Like they were just having a conversation about how cool poly was. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. What is that? And eventually through some of my friends and meeting more people in the kink scene, I met people that had polyamorous relationships. And it was kind of funny because earlier on in my kink career, I had actually kind of accidentally ended up in a poly scenario where uh, we didn't know it at the time, we didn't label it this, but I was seeing two people in basically a V triad where I was like, the point of the V. So like a V triad, by the way, I should explain this because y'all might not know this. V triad is like this, right? And there's a, a partner in the middle that has two partners that don't necessarily interact with each other. And I had two partners that were both more dominant oriented that I was exploring BDSM with, both on a very casual basis. They knew about each other. That part of it was totally consensual. And I thought I could just like keep 
doing that because it was fun and I wasn't dating either of them we just did BDSM together and that was it and eventually a couple months into doing that they both came to me around the same time and was like hey like you have to pick one of us like you like like independently of each other they were like I need you to like pick one of us I don't want to keep sharing you with someone else I don't remember exactly what they said but that was the impression I was left with and silly me thought I had to choose and there was no way to negotiate anything else and I ended up picking one of the people and we dated for a while because after that our relationship did transition into having power exchange and dating and everything else and towards the end of our relationship I was moving away and they were staying in the same town. And so we kind of decided that maybe it would be a good idea to open up our relationship and kind of see other people. Uh, like, honestly, I was curious about like dating other women. I'm still curious about it, fucking COVID, but that's another subject for a different day. Uh, and uh, we decided it was best to try like opening our relationship we weren't really poly yet we hadn't read any literature we hadn't talked to anyone else i hadn't really been otherwise exposed to it i just sort of knew that there were other options and we tried opening up but really before any sort of dating outside people ever happened we ended up breaking up because the distance was too much other relationship reasons that don't matter just like the relationship ended but after that relationship ended that was when i really like dove more into polyamory because at that point i had had more friends i had met more people that uh, did polyamory and i started to read about it on my own i read opening up i read more than two i just any book about poly that i could find i read it and i learned about it and it, at first like it made me really uncomfortable like i have to be honest i like the idea and primarily for me being asexual and i'm sure many of you will have predicted this one of the primary motivations is for the love of god not being someone's sole sexual outlet <laughs> this is such a relief because if you are an ace person trying to date other ace people that are also kinky, there's like, it, like if you're doing it locally, there's like you and maybe one other person. And if your kinks don't line up, like you're just gonna be a single Pringle, I guess forever. So if you narrow down your options too much, it's really, really hard to find anyone to date. And so polyamory kind of offered this practical way to, have the romantic connections I wanted and the kink connections I wanted without feeling the pressure of denying somebody sex because in polyamory in open relationships I always knew that person had other options besides me which kind of allowed me to have firmer boundaries around what I was comfortable with because there wasn't that same pressure and I sort of sat with that discomfort and I decided that even though I, like, I was not one of those people that was ever intrinsically drawn to Polly. It was a very like practical, this makes sense. This is something I want to choose to do as opposed to I think a lot of people that are sort of naturally Polly. And I guess maybe my previous experience with the V triad gives evidence that maybe I am naturally Polly, but I don't really look at it like that. I sort of consider that I was introduced to the subject and then made a practical choice to try it essentially i had also been involved with someone by that time that was also polyamorous and so kind of in order to be in a relationship with them i also had to be poly but there was so much evidence around me of people that had really happy healthy relationships doing it and it made so much sense with getting my own needs met that i decided to pursue it and I don't want to just say the rest was history, but uh, I was struggling with figuring out how to talk about this without like talking about people that maybe don't want to be talked about on YouTube and maintaining privacy because that's the other part of this is like, I really like don't like talking about my own personal stuff on YouTube in terms of like story time. The one time this guy like put a pencil up my butt or like whatever the Tanamojos of the world like make videos about. Like that's not my style. But I 
just, I feel like it's kind of necessary. So I, I was in a relationship with someone that was polyamorous and they had existing partners that were around before me. And again, my friends were all very polyamorous. And so, uh, while I, I find the interesting thing was, is that like, even though everyone around me was poly and then I was poly and we were all kinky, I was just like instantly friend zoned for, by like everybody in my local kink community. Like they didn't, see me as a potential like partner or a kink partner or a sex partner like I had to specifically look for people that wanted those things with me and I had to like kind of hunt them out a little bit because weirdly I think the stereotype is that like oh if you're like a poly woman like everyone's gonna fall over you and like want to date you instantly and like I have a strong belief that if you are a single woman who says they're polyamorous, dating is very easy. When you are a partnered woman that is polyamorous, especially if you're an openly ace woman that's polyamorous, a lot of poly men like don't consider you to be a viable potential partner. And that is something that has been a big part of my experience in dating, uh, like locally trying to date people or connect with people that I already know is they just like don't see me as an option because of either my existing partnership or because I'm asexual. And that kind of hurts, like it kind of sucks. Like, and I think Kat, uh, of Kat, Kat Black, uh, her channel, she has talked about this, I think in some of her videos about Polly, where like, unless you are an openly available like person for dating or for sex stuff, like as like you becoming their primary partner, they don't really pay you as much attention. Like they're happy to mess around on the side a little bit maybe, but they don't want a serious relationship with you unless you're going to be their primary partner, which means if you're doing what's called hierarchical polyamory, where you sort of rank order how much time you have for certain relationships and how much you prioritize them, there's usually primary and secondary, sometimes tertiary relationships. And the scenario would end up being is like, they would want you to be their primary partner and that you were the most devoted to them, even if you were their secondary and they had other partners outside of you. I've been in a lot of scenarios where there's somehow like polyamorous men that have like four partners, but none of their partners are dating anyone else or are only dating each other. And I don't know what that means, but it is a piece of information that I offer to you. So dating locally like wasn't really an option for me in terms of like the fact everyone kind of just saw me as a friend, which like, by the way, kind of hurts a little bit as an asexual. Like just because I'm asexual doesn't mean I'm incapable of romantic feelings or like wanting other relationships. And I don't think people like thought it maliciously. It was just like, oh, okay, I guess no one here sees me as anything other than like a casual friend. Cool, okay, moving on, <laughs> moving on. Um, the primary way that I found people to date was through OkCupid. Okay uh, I know there are other apps out there. I never tried Tinder because I just, I know that's not gonna be me. There's like Bumble. Uh, I, I, a field I think has been recommended to me before, but I've never tried it. So I'm the kind of person like I need to minimize where I'm, I'm going to spend my energy. And so for me, that means being on one dating app, if I'm going to be on any dating app and Bandit really needs attention right now. Hi, sweetheart. I know we're very good girl. Hi dog. Okay. Dog is going on my lap. So that way she can be pet while I talk. Okay, so dating apps. And the reason why I recommend OkCupid as a dating app is because they do have a lot of relationship options. They do allow you to say that you are in an open relationship. You are not able to pick multiple partners to say I'm partnered with on OkCupid, which I feel like is kind of a letdown for functionality, but I'm sure they have good reasons for it. And uh, you can actually now, for example, pick as like a modifier to your orientation that you're leather, as in like leather kinky. And so I am very excited to see how that functionality works out. But I like that website because it does ask a lot of questions about 
relationship style preference, if you're kinky or not, all of that, and you can also say that you are asexual. I can't remember what my orientation is on OkCupid. I did originally say that I was asexual, but I found that that led to a lot of misunderstandings, so I think I changed it to like heteroflexible or something because I just found that because you can pick like what orientations you're like okay with seeing in your potential matches I just found it limited a lot of my matches putting that I was asexual like as the option of my profile but of course whenever I talked to someone I was very upfront about like hey this is my orientation this is what I'm okay with and not like I always have that conversation even if it's not like in my profile and I found that talking about what it means to me works a lot better than people making assumptions based on what they think it means as an orientation. So I have found that you can find kinky people on OkCupid. You can find a lot of poly people on OkCupid. You can find a lot of both. However, there are a lot of people that are just like looking for a third to complete our relationship or are only kinky in the bedroom. But when you eventually wade through all of that, like maybe one out of every thousand people, you will find people that are actually poly and are actually kinky and all of that stuff. I would say of the people I've met on OkCupid, I've had a lot of conversations. I've had a couple of ongoing kind of longer term, just, just talking stage things. And I've had probably three people that I would say I've met on there that are kinky and poly that are varying degrees of accepting how asexual I am that have turned into kind of either longer term like friendship connections or things that we're going to be dating or are maybe going to be like boyfriend girlfriend things I don't know yet but yeah there have been people I've met on there that are poly and are kinky and are okay with me being asexual. I've never met another asexual on OkCupid though. I've met some demi people, but as far as the ace thing goes, I'm just like the asexual single Pringle, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if I'm special or what. By the way, if you guys ever see me on a dating profile, please just swipe away and don't message me. I get your messages. I see you. Also, it is probably me. Don't report me as being a catfisher that's caused some problems before. I'm sure you mean well, but if you see me on a dating site, if you ever see pictures of me on a dating site, that is not OkCupid. It's not me. So that one you can report. But if you do see me on OkCupid and uh, it looks like me, it probably is. If you, if you think it's not me, hey, send me an email. Let me know. I can figure it out. Uh, but otherwise, um, I know you guys are mean well and say nice things, but uh, I'm definitely not open to date anyone that knows me from YouTube, and that is a screening question that I do ask people, and I will find out if you know me, but I would say that my initial sort of looking at Polly as a practical thing for being able to not be someone's like sole outlet for sex has worked in varying degrees. It works as well as long as the other person is seeing other people. Because if they're not seeing other people, that pressure is definitely still there. And it's something that can still be difficult to navigate around. But I think just by virtue of the fact that people I'm dating are kinky and poly and are more practiced at conversations like that, it is easier than when I was dating vanilla people. And I would say this, so not everyone I've ever like dated has been kinky, obviously. I have, I guess, like, everyone is at least kink aware, even if they aren't kinky themselves, you know? So they have to be at least like open to the fact I'm going to do kink with other people and if seeing bruises or healing cuts or something makes them uncomfortable, then like obviously that isn't going to work out long term because I'm not going to stop doing needle play or impact play or bondage because it makes another person uncomfortable even when I'm not doing it with them because it is also like my job to at least talk about BDSM so it just would be too much conflict. It would be too too much conflict and I'm trying to think of like what else I could tell you guys that you all would want to know about my experience. I guess this is like almost sort of a video of like how I discovered these things and how 
I got started. So I guess like leave your questions down below. Like let me know what else it is that you guys want to know about for asexuality and polyamory. Uh, I, I would say that more poly people are aware of what asexuality is. I think they are more accepting. It definitely does not make it easier to date. It does relieve some of the pressure, but it's complicated in other ways as well, right? Like for example, like even though I'm asexual, like there can still be feelings of jealousy like when my partner is having sex with a new person for the first time because I don't know what that means about our relationship because you know, obviously if I am not having sex with this person and they are not also asexual and, and they're aloe and that's really important to them, even if they say otherwise, like maybe they will start prioritizing this other relationship over me or maybe they will love them more or whatever. And so there is still like jealousy. There are still all of the usual poly problems, but they're just different and they come in their own unique asexual flavor and and you know dealing with that and like learning how to cope with jealousy and everything else is totally an ongoing process and something I actually critique a lot of poly discourse for is I see a lot of people like they're asked like okay but do you feel jealous and instead of just like saying yes and admitting it they will go in circles and talk around it and they'll say anything but yes I feel jealous they'll say like oh well like you shouldn't feel jealous or um, you know jealousy isn't really its own emotion it means these other things like they'll like explain their way around what jealousy is without saying yes or no to if they ever feel jealousy or they'll put like a value judgment on if they should or not which is not the same thing as they do or not. Personally, I think jealousy is a normal experience. It's part of the process. I think whenever you deny emotion or shut down an emotion or pretend like it's not there or shame yourself for feeling a normal human reaction, that is going to make it 10 times worse. And if you can accept the feeling, that makes it much easier to work through and address. But you know, God, I just like, by the way, I just really don't want to make video videos about jealousy. Like I just like, I know it's gonna be what people ask about and I'm just gonna say to go to the resources because it is very, very complicated and working through jealousy is complicated because it can come from so many different places. It can be insecurity. It uh, can be low self-esteem. It can be from past trauma. It can be from past bad relationships. And each one of those sources requires a different tool to navigate through. Yeah, there's just there's so many potential possibilities, I guess, for this. I would say overall my experience of being poly and asexual has been very positive. And I think it has gone from something that was sort of a practical choice to something that I see myself, you know, pursuing in all of my future relationships. I think I can be happy being monogamous. I think I am sort of ambivalent between the two. I'm, you know, it just, it's just very me. I'm gray A. I'm sex neutral. I am sort of neutral between monogamy and poly. Like, as long as I get the romantic connections that I want to have and can have kink and I'm respected and understood, like, that's the important thing for me. Poly is a really, really, really nice bonus and I would like to have it in my life, but if I end up only, like, dating one person for a while, that's also, like, kind of fine with me. I don't feel like deprived, I guess, even if multiple relationships like do make me happier and are more fulfilling. Yeah, again, I keep saying that I think that's like everything I have to talk about, but I think this is this is really it because I do want to kind of leave the floor open to maybe answering more questions and knowing what sort of direction to go in for future videos. Again, I am not like a perfect educator about poly. This is just my story and my experience, and I hope that you all can understand sort of the difference between being an educator around something and merely being like a person online sharing their own life experience. And yeah, if you guys do have any questions, your own experience being asexual or kinky and poly, I would love to know down in the comment section below, as well as any other questions you might have. If you enjoyed this, if you have not already, please do subscribe because I make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink, BDSM, alternative relationship, asexuality related topics. And finally, if you really enjoyed this video, if you wanna support what I do, 
And the best way that you can do that is with Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support me over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye. Thank you.